Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. I'm Helen Bradley and today we're looking at how you can move around a Design Cuts Illustrator file and how you can extract the elements that you want to use in your own illustrations. Before we begin, let's have a look at the packs that I'm using today and they're all from our freebies collections. So I'm using this set from Lisa Glantz and also this one, this is another one of hers. I'm using this pack here and we'll also use our birthday party vectors pack here. We're going to use them to have a look inside these files to see what comes with them and how we can get those elements out into our own designs. I'm going to open up the layers panel here and the layers panel is really the secret to finding out what's in the file. These thumbnails can be pretty small so if you want to enlarge them open the flyout menu and go to panel options. You can choose large but you can also type in another value and I find 50 is a nice big size to allow me to see my thumbnails very clearly. Every designer is going to approach organization within their files in a different way and Lisa generally will put everything inside layer one inside groups. So you can expand and contract layer one by just clicking on this icon and then work out where everything is by clicking on the eyeball and that will make it very clear as to where each element is. If you're interested in this flower, you can simply click on this icon here to select it and then you can copy and paste it into your own design. In this case, there are a number of elements inside this group and I'm just going to change the color of them because they're just a little bit difficult to see right now. So if you want to select a single element from inside this group, then there's a tool here in Illustrator that will really help you. It shares a toolbar position with the direct selection tool and it's called the group selection tool. The group selection tool allows you to hover over and select an element inside a group. So we could select just this element with it. It's a whole lot easier than continually clicking on an image to go into isolation mode to be able to select something with the selection tool. So once you have this element selected, you're ready to go and copy it into your design. Let's have a look at another set of elements, again created by Lisa, and again this organization that she has a tendency to use, where she places individual elements inside groups. Again, very easy to understand what's happening here. Open the flyout menu and you can get access to the elements inside the design. Here's a spirograph from another artist, and this artist names the layer with their name. And then you can expand the layer to see what's inside it and the entire element is here on this compound path. Here we have a vintage seamless pattern but if we open up the layer it's going to be revealed as an image. This is a ping file and although it's not a scalable vector it can be used as a pattern tile. It was designed as a seamless pattern tile. So with the selection tool we just drag and drop it into the swatches panel and now we can use it to fill any shape as a seamless repeating pattern. But just be aware that because it's an image, because it's a bitmap, it's not going to scale the way vectors would typically scale. Here's another Lisa Glance illustration. Again, everything's in layer one. These elements are nicely labeled. So if, for example, we want to remove her glasses, we can just locate the glasses and turn them off. We can also remove her scarf. Lisa's elements are very nicely designed so if you remove parts of them generally the entire image is intact underneath. This is a texture pattern also by Lisa Glance. In this case you'll want to select over the shape and just drag and drop it into the swatches panel. This is actually a vector texture you can check here by seeing the elements that go towards making it up and so you can fill a shape with it and it can also be scaled because it is a vector. Here are our second birthday freebies and you'll see here that we've got a number of layers. We've got the color palette down here that's in one layer and then all the vector elements and then the credits. And this layer is locked, you can tell by the lock icon here. Let's have a look inside these vector assets. Well inside the vector assets are a series of named groups so it's very easy to see that this is this burst over here and if you wanted this cupcake here well it's this one. So you can just select it and copy it into your own document. 
Let's zoom into this particular cupcake. I'm going to make it really large on the screen and let's open up the cupcake group here. Inside the group are a number of compound shapes. There's one for the base of the cupcake, one for the cherry on top and one for the icing. So we can go to the cherry, for example, and select it and then click to apply a different color to it. Learning to navigate the layers palette so you can easily determine which pieces belong to a particular element so that you can use them in your own designs is key to working with our design cuts. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these illustrator techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the link here on the screen to get more video tutorials and regular updates. You'll find us on Facebook and visit us at designcuts.com when you're looking to purchase vector illustrations. There's a link to our website in the description below. Until next time, thank you for watching.